Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, you will learn how to create your own chat GPT in three simple steps. So basically, you will learn how to create this chat GPT like interface which is deployed on your machine that you can access using local host with models of your choice. You can use any of the open source models by downloading them and importing them onto this chat GPT like interface. So this video is going to be super interesting. Make sure you watch it till the end. And you might ask Abhishek when we have chat GPT which is available for free. What is the use case of creating something like this? Of course, there are use cases which I'm going to cover towards the end of this video. So let's get started. The only prerequisite for this video is that you need to have Docker installed on your machine. So assuming you have Docker installed and up and running on your machine. We will start with three steps that are required to create this chat GPT like application. Step one is to download and install Olama. So this will be our step first step where we download and install Olama on our machine. Second step is to decide the models or choose the models which we want to use for our chat GPT like interface. Let's say Llama 3 or Granite or any other models which we are going to choose and download these models onto our local machine. And step three is to use something called as open web UI which is serving this chat GPT like interface. And of course, we also need integration between open AI and Olama, which is something that we are going to cover in step three. So these are the three steps that we are going to do in this video. And I'm going to explain you what is Olama, what is open web UI, everything in the video. So let's start with the step one, which is Olama. So just search for olama.com and you will reach this page where you have a download button through which you can download Olama on your Mac OS or Linux or Windows. But the big question is, what is Olama? If you're coming from a DevOps background or if you are someone who know what is Docker, just understand Olama is doing something very similar to what Docker does for the container images. So you can go to Olama and you can search for models, let's say Llama 3. So Llama 3 is a very popular uh, LLM model which is developed by Meta and Llama 3 can be compared with the GPT-4 the performance of Llama 3. So it's a very powerful open source model. Just like how you search for container images on Docker, you can search for models on Olama and you can download these models using the Olama CLI, right? For that, we need to go back and download Olama on our machine. So just click and you will see that the package gets download. Of course, I already have Olama on my machine. I use models on day to day basis. So I will just cancel the download. But once you download Olama, you can verify that. Just take your terminal and on your terminal. Let me just cancel this. Yeah. On your terminal, just type Olama and you should see this output. 
This says that Olama is installed and set to path on your machine. Again, if you know Docker, you might find most of these commands familiar because you have commands like ps, which is for listing running models. In Docker, you have Docker ps, which is for running containers. Here you have Olama ps, which is for running models. And you have rm for removing a model, pull, push, list, help, most of the commands that you use as part of Docker. And you also have run command, which is used to run a model. Basically to download and run the model, you can directly use the run command. So this is our step number one, where we download Olama. And the second step is to identify the models. Of course, here you need some understanding of which models you need. For example, I prefer Llama 3 model and I have a very huge machine with the spec. So I can even go for Llama 3.1 with 405 billion parameters. I'll tell you what is 405p, but Llama 3 is a significantly heavy model. If you want a little lightweight ones, maybe you can go for, you can go for a uh, grenade or any other lightweight models, the open source models, which are available on Olama. Even with Llama 3, if you observe carefully, Llama 3.2 has two tags, right? Just like how your Docker image has tags, even with models, you have tags. One is 1B and one is 3B. And you can see 1B is a lightweight one because 1B here references 1 billion parameters. So Llama 3.2 model, which is trained with 1 billion parameters, you can download for 1.3 GB, right? Whereas if you go for 3 billion parameters, the size is 2 GB. And as the model size grows, your resources that are used on your machine, such as the CPU, GPU, RAM, they will also be increased. When you try to give some prompts to the model, the resource utilization will also be high. So if you have machine with less spec, go with the less billion parameters tag. So in my case, I will go with Llama 3.1, which is a very huge model. And instead of going with 405B, which takes a lot of time, let me pull 8B. I think it is already there on my machine, but still Llama 3 run, just like how you do Docker run, image colon 8B. If you're doing it for first time, it might take 15 minutes, 20 minutes as well, right? because it has to download such huge model. In my case, it's already there. So the model is ready where I can give a prompt and get the response. For example, let me ask this model, write a shell script to create a GitHub issue on Kubernetes slash Kubernetes repo using API because it might also give with GitHub client. So I asked for API and here you go. So it is already writing the script for me, just like how you get the response on chat GPT. And I am getting this response from the model, which is deployed local to my machine. Maybe if you have some privacy issues or within your organization, you cannot use the models on the internet. This is something that you can do. There are other use cases also, which I'll cover, but for now you can see, I have the response and I can run multiple models, right? I don't have to just run one single model on my machine. If you look at the models that I have, Olama list, you can see I have Llama 3.2, Llama 3.1 and other model. I also 
had granite model i think i removed it anyways so these are the models that i have on my machine you can stop here as well if you don't want to set up a chat gpt like interface where you get the sso support you can see the rkf charts you can see the chat history for some reason let's say you don't want all this you can stop here and you can use the models locally from the cli as well but if you want to set up this this is where you need docker running on your machine and all that you need to do is run a simple docker command i forgot to mention at any point of this video if you feel lost if you think you did not follow a particular command or you want to reference the command somewhere don't worry i have created this medium page right i wrote this medium blog explaining each and every step that we perform as part of this video i will put the link in the description so that you can also refer to this medium blog towards the end of this video or after the video cool so once this is done the step 3 is to use open web ui so open web ui is the one that is providing us this chat gpt like interface and it is so cool that it provides you the previous chat history it provides you the sso integration it provides you the admin panel so that you can set up our back so as a devops engineer or as a ml ops engineer if you want to set up such chat gpt like platform which is restricted to your organization you can go ahead and use olama plus open web ui that is something that we are doing in this video okay now let's go back and run the docker command so docker so this is the command docker run we are running it in the background mapping the ports and we are using the docker internal network the host network followed by couple of mounts and this is the image for open web ui now as soon as i run this of course it says that container is already running because i am running this container very first time when you set this up it will ask you to create a admin user account which i have created that's why there is only one active user once you have the admin user account you can go ahead and you can you know create multiple users you can group the users you can grant them with developer tester different kinds of our back settings cool and whatever models that you have local to your machine again if i do olama list you can see that i have these four models right all the models are shown here you can select any of the model we were using llama 3.1 right let's use the model and ask a question let me ask it probably the same question right a shell script to create a gh issue on kubernetes slash kubernetes repo using api now let's see if this model also gives us the output so you can see the output provided by this model is different when you compare with the output that is provided by llama 3 this is another reason why you need different models sometimes one model might give you a answer which is not accurate when you have different models one model might be best at python other model might be best at kubernetes or some other model might have a lot of information about argo cd and it might give you the accurate information with argo cd so this is where if you are using ai on your day to day basis if you are using the ai assistants this way you can improve the quality of the answer and you can also ensure a model 
gives you an answer if you are not sure if the answer is right or wrong you get take that question and answer to other model and validate if the answer is right so the probability is endless you can play with different models and you can do a lot of things so this is another use case the first use case is privacy in a lot of companies using chat gpt or using github copilot is not allowed because it makes external api calls right and in such cases where you have no option to use the public ai assistants you can set up something like this on your machine or you can set up something like this for your team second use case is something that i just explained when you are not sure about the output given by a model now this model gave me this output i can take the same question answer to llama 3.2 and validate if the response is right or wrong third use case which is again very important model development let's say you are developing a model from scratch and you are looking for feedback from different people if you have the model local to your machine you are the only one who can test that model but when you need a larger feedback you can create something like this you can create a strict rbac for group of people who can access your model that you are developing and you can get feedback from them probably one person can try python one person can try uh, argo other person can try go that's how you can collect a larger feedback for the model that you are developing so these are the three important use cases of course there are many other but these are the three important use cases so i hope you like this video try olama try open web ui only thing if you have a laptop with cpus or if you have a machine where you don't have any gpus still you can try this but the response will be slow you don't see the response that you see in this video because i have 30 gpus on the machine where i am running this demo thank you so much for watching the video see you all in the next one take care bye bye